Can people travel supernaturally? My guest stepped into the invisible world and found himself in Rio de Janeiro. Next on this edition of It's Supernatural. Centuries have come and gone, offering wisdom and understanding throughout the ages. Today, there should be nothing beyond one's power to discover. And yet, the strange, unusual, and mysterious world of the supernatural defies understanding. Stay tuned for a unique and powerful investigation into a curious, undiscovered universe only on It's Supernatural. Hello, I'm Sid Roth, your investigative reporter, here with Ken Peters. Ken Peters, as a young boy, started having visions, and then at 21, had a dream in which he saw the future of the world. He saw things that no, did not even exist, and all of a sudden, a few years later, they came into being. And he didn't know Jesus. He came from a Catholic background. He had never read the Bible. And all of a sudden, things started happening. For instance, his best friend had an experience with Jesus and invited him to a church. It was certainly nothing like the Catholic church he went to, was it, Ken? No, Sid, it wasn't. What happened in this service? Well, I went into the service. Uh, it was very much uh, alive. It wasn't uh, liturgical, so to speak. It wasn't reserved, which I was uh, accustomed to. A uh, lot of very vibrant music. Uh, the, the pastor was... Uh, preaching, uh, you know, fervently uh, from the Bible. During the service, I, I literally, uh, in my heart, I mocked it all. I sat in the upper balcony mm -hmm. of this church. It was an old theater and uh, mocked just about everything I heard and saw. And then the end of the service, the pastor began to pray and said that, uh, that there was a young man uh, that was here today that God had put on his heart and he began to ask the, the people in the church to pray. They began to bow their heads and pray. And uh, I was watching this from the balcony. And, uh, you know, I began to think in my mind, well, who is this young man? And then he began to share things about this young man and his life, the direction he was going. And he said that God was trying to get your attention through a dream. He had a plan for your life. He was going to use you for his will. And I began to ask myself, well, who is this? Who is this, you know? And probably about three or four times I asked, you know, in my mind, well, who mm -hmm. is this person he's describing? And for five or six, seven minutes he kept doing this, and he kept describing my life. And uh, it was like I was dull at first. I didn't realize it was my life. And then mm -hmm. all of a sudden I asked again, well, who is this that he's talking about? And I heard someone speak behind me. It's you. Who spoke? Uh, I thought at first it was the person mm -hmm. behind me, so I, I turned to look, and the person behind me had their head bowed, and you know they were they were praying silently to themselves, and and so I thought, well, you know maybe I'm hearing things. So I asked again, uh, who is this? And I heard it again, it's you. Only this time I heard it clearly spoken to me this way, and so I said, it's me, and the voice said again, it's you, and then instantly after that third time I realized. This is the same voice that I heard in the dream I had when I saw Jesus tell me that death would never hold me. The, the tone of his voice, it was the same voice. And so I, I said, it's me. And then I became very emotional at that moment. Mm -hmm. uh, I wasn't the kind of person that would cry. Uh, I was a very strong individual. And I became very emotional. And something uh, told me I need to go to the front of the church and talk with this pastor. And so the next thing I know, I'm out of my seat, <clears throat> running down this balcony, and I'm at the front of this church. And, <clears throat> excuse me, he asked me if I wanted to uh, ask Jesus to be my Lord and Savior and to forgive me for my sins. And I, I said, uh, yes, yes, I do. And uh, he filled me with his spirit. And, and at that point, uh, you know, I had a, a personal, uh, intimate experience with Jesus. What did it feel like? Oh, Sid, it felt like all the years that were troublesome in my life were lifted off me. Um, you know, it seemed like at that moment, from the time I had the visions as a little boy, uh, up until the point when I didn't want it to happen anymore, from that point forward, there was weight on me. There was uh, just despair almost. And I felt all that lift off me. I literally felt sins being lifted off me, my wrongs. I felt them being taken from me. 
Uh, I now, had, now, you went on the strangest, strangest trip yes. to another country. Yes. Tell me the circumstances of that. Well, uh, I was staying in a parsonage at a church, uh, and uh, shortly after I had uh, accepted Jesus as my Savior, um, people began to ask me about what was happening with me. And so I was at this church and uh, staying in this parsonage. There was no power, no electricity, no heat in the building. It was very cold. It was the winter. And uh, I was asleep. And in the middle of the night, uh, the room lit up. It got very bright. And I thought, well, you know, it must be morning already. Cause a I, street I, lamp or something? And, well, I, I thought it was sunrise because uh -huh. it was so bright, you right. know. And uh, this bright light uh, just shined in the room, completely uh, took the presence in the room. And I began to look, and I said, well, who's there? And as soon as I said, who's there, the light kind of peeled back, so to speak. And there was Jesus standing there uh, with this light around him, just uh, brilliant. And uh, he began to speak to me and, and, and told me that I would be a prophet. And I didn't understand what that meant. I mean, You didn't I, know what the word prophet even meant? Well, maybe like, a, like a, a psychic or something, you know, something that I had heard about, you know, maybe on television. But to have an understanding of, of, of a prophet that God would use? No, I really didn't. Um, you and, know. and incidentally, uh, a psychic is not from God. Why? because the source is not God, and because God says I require accuracy. And psychics, by their own admission, are right maybe 10% of the time. I think I'm stretching a little bit. Anyway, go on. Well, what happened was uh, he began to show me scriptures. He took me to my Bible and showed me scriptures uh, that I was to follow with my life. And then, uh, I know this may sound silly, but the next thing I realize is I'm standing on a mountain uh, in some, I, I believed in my mind, a South American country because I saw a lot of people that looked South American, uh, maybe a, a Latin background, making a trek up this mountain. And at the top of this mountain was a huge statue of Jesus with his arms stretched out. And these people were climbing up this mountain. It seemed to be th hundreds and thousands, Sid. There was a, a huge multitude of people climbing this mountain. And I was standing there with, with Jesus, and he was crying. Tears were running down his face. Why? Well, I asked him. I said, well, Lord, why are you crying? Uh, because I thought these people were, you know, progressing mm -hmm. to, to meet him or something. And he said, um, if only my people would worship me. And they were going to this image of him. It was more of an image. And then I realized that some of my own uh, worship in the past had been more to an image of God than to God the Creator, you know. And uh, many years later, again, the reason I am I'm so adamant about these uh, dreams and visions, uh, many years later, I was watching television and uh, a television commercial came on. Uh, it was an airline commercial and it was a big jet airliner flying in the clouds and all of a sudden they panned on the jet and it was flying next to this huge statue of, of Jesus on this mountain and I shouted to my wife, that's where I was. And then down at the caption it said Rio de Janeiro. And so he began to share with me things about the end and what would begin I'll to I'll tell happen. you what, hold that thought. I want to find out what's going to happen in the end of days, don't you? We'll be right back after this. YouTube Mishpocha. Mishpocha is a Hebrew word. It means family. This is Sid Roth. Welcome to my world where it's naturally supernatural. If you've been blessed by this show, please subscribe. Then click the bell so you won't miss a single episode of It's Supernatural. Hello, I'm Sid Roth, your investigative reporter, and I'm having a good time here with Ken Peters because we found out he literally was transported, didn't even buy an airplane ticket, I mean supernaturally transported from one country to another. He found himself, he wasn't sure where it was, but he saw things going on and he saw a specific mountain, and then many years later he's watching television and he sees that mountain. Where was that at? 
That was uh, Rio de Janeiro, uh, Brazil. That's a pretty exciting thing to be translated from one country to another. Uh, Sid, I was in a room where the Lord's presence was, and then the next thing I know, I'm gone, mm. and I'm in another nation. And I, I knew it was another place because of the people, you know, the, the, the uh, looks of the people. Well, has this ever happened uh, after that to you? Uh, one other time, actually. It was a very strange event. Uh, we were trying to get to a meeting place, and uh, a Jewish uh, minister was going to be ministering, and I, I wanted to get there to get prayer from him because I had seen that he had worked with miracles. And there mm -hmm. had been a lot of miracles in his ministry, and so I felt like if I could get to that meeting, I could get prayer, you know, uh, because those were some of the things that I felt God had shown me that I would uh, be part of were miracles. Mm -hmm. And so we were driving, and a gentleman had brought his mother. She was an invalid, and it was very difficult getting her in and out of the car. We ended up getting out of town late. We had to drive about two and a half hours. Uh, we should have got there about 30 to 40 minutes late, and we got there 20 minutes early, and we never broke the speed limit ever. So you, uh, you, you feel that God just transported you. Uh, he was speeding up time. Yes. I think it was com compacting time. Yes. In fact, a prophet told me that that's what's going on right now With in time. this world, that time is being compressed. Yes. I, I don't know whether, whether it's because there's gray hair or, or whether it's really happening, but I don't know. Time just, you blink your eyes and, and a year passes by. Do you feel the same way? You don't have as much gray hair. You well, don't have any gray hair. A few. <laughs> a few. I feel that way, Sid, because it, it's Jesus himself said that he would shorten time for the elect's sake. Hmm. Now, tell me some specific things that God has shown you about uh, people, or places. Well, some specifics about the United States were that there was a, a period of time that God was allowing us uh, to continue the way we were. Uh, we've fallen into decay. We've fallen into uh, places uh, of debauchery, literally. Just uh, we've lost every standard that we once held dear. So he spoke to me and said that, that we have a timeline till 2003. That's not very far. No, that's three years. And he said to me that by 2003, if there wasn't a repentance in people's hearts and a changing of going back to the ways of God, that our nation would be considered a goat nation rather than a sheep nation. What, what does that mean to you? Uh, it means to me that goats are those that were sent away but the, the sheep were called into the presence of God forever. That's a pretty scary thought. It is. Which way is it going to go, do you know? Uh, no, I don't know. I don't know which way it's going to go because I believe it's contingent again upon our response. Hmm. Uh, remember Jonah the prophet? Right. Uh, he had a word that God gave him and he said to tell Nineveh I will destroy it in 40 days. There was no conditions. But Nineveh re responded to God. It says even the animals fasted. The people fasted, hmm. remember? They repented. And so I believe if we change our mindsets, then we will be uh, held in the balances of the Lord favorably. You know, I I'm intrigued by your gift. Tell me how it actually operates. Do you hear a voice inside of you say something and then you say it out loud? Do you see things? How does this work? Several ways, Sid. Uh, the first you describe, there's times I do hear a voice. There's times I, I hear a strong voice speaking to me um, that uh, a certain thing will happen or to share a certain thing with an individual. Uh, but many times it's, it's through prayer, you know, communion with God, communicating to Him on a daily basis that He'll begin to speak, begin to, speak to me about issues. But yes, then there's times there's dreams, visions. Uh, sometimes there's just a strong knowing, Sid, uh, you almost know that something's going to happen, and you can't really say... Um, okay, like, like in the uh, break, uh -huh. you said, God just showed me something for you. Did you hear this? Did you know this? I saw a picture uh, when I told you about that uh, instance of a, uh, a benefactor coming to you, someone that's going to enhance your ministry financially so you can accomplish God's will. Uh, what I saw was a picture, and I saw a gentleman walking up to you with a briefcase and saying to you, there's more than enough to accomplish what God has called you to accomplish. Uh, something that's being spoken to my spirit right now is that you have a great vision. You have a deep vision in your heart, big vision. Uh, you're like Abraham. You 
you're seeing the stars and, 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 and God's challenging you to count those stars. And he's telling me that in your heart, stars are representations of people groups and nations that you will affect, especially Jewish people groups. And he's going to bring to you everything that's necessary to reach them. Uh, I keep thinking of how Abraham was given favor by God and how he was allowed to overthrow kings, you remember? Mm -hmm. And how there was a, a priest that came to him and, and Abraham presented an offering to him. God considered that uh, pleasing to him. I sense, Sid, that God's saying that what you've been offering to God has been pleasing to him. Also, he tells me to tell you this, that you've almost felt like there's a little holding back, a little bit of maybe uh, the timing hasn't been right or there's just a, a slight resistance, so to speak, like maybe just kind of a nudge to hold you a second. But I hear the Lord saying that, he says, my son, the, the nudge is being lifted off and the restraint is being lifted off for you to go forward. Um, one other thing, I'm just going to drop this. I feel like I have a, a permission to release this, that you're going to be well pleased and favored highly with what you see your children accomplish. For the, for well, the that Lord. is... I, I really like that, especially since I know prophetic words you've spoken that have come to pass. For instance, you talked to another person about money. Tell me about that. Uh, that he was going to receive money. Oh, yes. Uh, well, there's, there's many times that God will speak to me about individuals receiving finances. And some people uh, say, well, it's, it's you know, does God put money on trees? I don't believe He puts money on trees, but I do believe that He will give you an opportunity to fulfill His will. Um, there's been times that uh, the Lord said that a church was going to receive a piece of property, free and clear, and, and those things have happened. Um, just numerous, numerous occasions. Ken, have you missed it much? Have you said words that haven't come true? You know, Sid, there was one word that I gave about 12 years ago that didn't come to pass when I saw it coming to pass, but came to pass later on. But, but I can say, of that? Uh, I'm sure I have, but to have someone come and tell me that you said this would happen and it didn't happen, uh, not yet. Now that doesn't mean I can't. Okay, I'm going to ask him to be so open to the Spirit of God. I believe that God is, you know, God just told me something. Someone with a neck problem has just been healed, and I believe some wonderful things are going to happen when we come back. Be right back. Hello, Sid Roth. How about you? Are you curious about who our guest is going to be next week? I am. Let's go to the control room. Janie, who's on for next week? We're going to speak to a man named Owens Edge, and he didn't believe in God, but he prayed if God was real in a drought, then prove it. Well, it rained only on his house. A few years ago, All of, then he, he believed in God, and then a few years ago, all these miracles started happening, and a lady was brought to a meeting of his, and as she was just on the floor, and he thought he didn't really know what was wrong with her but then all of a sudden she got up and she's screaming and everyone's screaming he found out later what was wrong with her guess what was wrong with her i can't guess what she was brought to that meeting by her children because she was dead 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 wow she was brought to the meeting because she was dead now Ken, just to build the faith a little bit more, God has shown you thing, things about people in the past. Let's take one specific person, I don't have to use their name, mm -hmm. that God has shown you and what has happened. Well, uh, thinking of, uh, of a situation with healing, uh, the Lord showed me a woman and uh, she was in the back row of a meeting and he said, this woman uh, was stricken with MS, and I, I want to heal her, and I want to heal her right now. Uh, I was, you know, uh, a little fearful. So what do you do when you get a word like this? Do you go f forward and say, can I have the microphone, or? Uh, there's times I have, yes. W what did uh, you do in this case? Well, in this case, what I did, I said uh, to myself, I said to the Lord, 
well, Lord, if this is you, will you please show me and show me somehow that this is you telling me this. About three or four minutes later, this woman came up to me and said, that lady in the back of the church, the Lord just told me to tell you that you need to pray for her, that he wants to heal her of some disease. Something is going on right now. Yes. Was she healed? She was healed instantly. But something is going right now. Right now it's going on in this set. There's like uh, the presence yes. of God is yes. uh, it's almost like a river and it's getting deeper yes. and deeper. Yes. What does God want to do right now? I believe God wants to heal physically. Me too. And I, I believe he also wants to heal barren wombs. Really? Uh, yes. Uh, couples that have been contending to have children. Uh, what I saw was people crying and grieving because they felt they had done something wrong and God wasn't going to give them children because they were being punished. Maybe, uh, and I, God's not telling me this, I'm speculating, but uh, I, I really believe there are some women that have had abortions and feel that such shame over this that they don't even deserve to have another child. The truth of the matter is abortion is murder. However, the truth of the situation is Jesus. He's the truth. And he says if you'll confess your sin, he's just and faithful to just wash it away mm -hmm. and make you righteous in right relationship with him. Besides uh, barrenness, is there any other areas that yes, God wants to Yes, there is. Heal? I just had something come to me very strongly as you were saying that, Sid, uh, about uh, that situation that there's been people that have known God and have lost everything in their businesses or uh, in their employment, have lost everything, literally uh, went into bankruptcy, lost it all and felt as though God was punishing them that and that this is their time now to be restored. This is a season of restoration. One other thing that I'm hearing strongly that's supposed to happen is that the Lord wants His people to hear His voice. It's not a special thing for myself or you. It's for all of God's people. And uh, there was a prophecy in the Bible that said in the last days, His people would prophesy. They would hear His voice. And so there's people right now that if they will reach out to God, that He will cause them to hear His voice. How do they reach out? Just with their hearts. Just by saying, God, I want to hear you clearly. I want you to speak to me in a way that I can hear clearly and know it's you speaking to me. Is that going to happen right now if they reach out? Right this moment if they reach out? Right this moment if they reach out. Well, then out. I suggest you do that. Right this moment. Are you interested in hearing God's voice? I mean, like, I, I, I heard the same condition again that I did before. Someone's neck has just been healed. And in the head, there are, it, there's, there's like something, anything you need in the head area. If there's like a migraine, it's gone. And if you have a back problem, you are healed. By the way, I'm not speculating. I'm hearing this. And you can hear this too. If you reach out and say, God, I make Jesus my Messiah and Lord. Please forgive me of all of my sins. I want to hear your voice. Do you know there is no greater thrill? There is no greater position to be in than to hear God's voice? I mean, the person whose neck was just healed, I believe you're also having your ears healed. You're, you're able to hear God's voice. Ken, is God telling you anything more? Yes, I'm getting one more thing about an individual named Martha. And that if Martha uh, will not look back any longer, uh, Martha struggled, Martha had some very, very uh, shameful things that she wished she hadn't have been a part of that Jesus has forgiven. And if he, he says to her, don't look back, but go forward because there's joy and uh, there's a river that she's going to come into, a river of joy. It's going to be a place where uh, the river is moving slowly and sweeping her along slowly into joy. Martha, that sounds pretty good to me, but I'll tell you what God's showing me right now. There is such an anointing for healing that I want you to take your hand and put it on the part of your body that needs healing, whether it's your back or your neck or, 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 or your head or your nose, whatever, and say, I'm going to pray right now. In Jesus' name, I command healing in your body. I command the spirit of infirmity to leave. I thank you that by your stripes, almighty God, they were healed. The greatest healing of all is for you to know God. 
Reach out right now, say, God, I want to know you. I must know you. I'm desperate to know you. There's nothing else this world has to offer. I pray that you forgive me of my sins. I pray that the blood of Jesus washes them away. And now, come inside of me, Lord Jesus. Take over my life. I make you Lord of my life. Amen. And now, you don't even have to be Martha. You can start rejoicing because there's peace. Shalom.